You are holy and blameless before the Lord because of who you are in the Spirit. That is good news, folks. But unless you believe it, it's not going to do you any good. You have to believe this stuff. You have to say, yes, I hear it, I understand it, and I'm just going to go ahead and believe it. Like, what have you got to lose? Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Arrested and Free. My name is Julianne Harris and I have been arrested by God's goodness, by His grace, by His love, and by His mercy. And I've been set free from fear and pain, anxiety, discontentment, and all the negative things that can happen to us in life. I've been set free from. And a special shout out to my folks in Northeastern Montana. Today is May the 1st in the year of our Lord 2022. And man, I don't even understand where this year is going to so far, but hey, it's good. Uh, we are in the third great awakening and great things are happening in the kingdom of God. And I want great things to be happening in your life as well. So that's why I do these um, videos, you guys, is because I want you to understand who you are in Christ Jesus and who would you be if you truly believe these things you know that's the series that I'm on it's kind of um, meandered around on <laughs> what I'm teaching on and as I was listening to myself last week I was like you know I always fight going back to um, I never want to talk about righteousness too much but I don't understand why? Because righteousness is what it's all about. And when I say righteousness, I'm talking about your right standing with God. And this is a big deal, you guys. And so um, I'm going to touch on a few things today. Um, and it has to do with righteousness. But listen, if you truly believed these things that I'm telling you, that I'm saying about righteousness, if you really truly believed it, you would look different. Your life would look different, period. And mine as well. You know, nobody, none of us have completely arrived. We're all just walking in a different level in each of these truths. And some of you guys have never thought about it. You don't even realize it. You don't even know it or believe it. And so you're not seeing any fruit in your life. Uh, because you don't understand righteousness. So, you know, as I was praying about like, Lord, what should I share today? Um, it came to my mind yesterday. So at my job, uh, we have, and I've mentioned it before, we have these things called open houses to where we invite the public in to just kind of experience Karis Bible College. And, um, yesterday we had one of those events and, um, it was interesting uh, what I experienced. So it's always a powerful time uh, because everybody that's coming is kind of like, oh, I don't know, is this the next step? Is this what God wants me to do? And um, trust me, this will get down to what I've been sharing on. <laughs> so uh, let's back up about a month, a month and a half ago. Where I work, it's, uh, we're attached to um, the prayer center, the call center. And so what happens, and it happens more than you would like to realize, but people call in to the prayer line um, and are, are just motivated by evil, for lack of better uh, way of putting it. And they actually have to, they have a criteria set in place of blacklisting callers. That means um, they'll enter, um, Anyways, it's called blacklist. I'm, I'm not trying to divulge too much information. But when this happens, when somebody gets put on a blacklist is what it's called, um, uh, they usually have a recording of the phone call that has warranted this situation. So when they do that, they send it out to everybody involved with the phone lines so that we're aware of um, this person and why uh, this has happened. And so I listen to those calls and it's pretty bad. <laughs> um, they're not good calls. Uh, there's a definite reason why they're not allowed to call in again. And this one call was this young gal and she was basically upset with God. Now listen to what I'm saying because I'm, I'm, I'm saying 
who would you be if you truly believe that you are right with God? Um, and she was basically upset because she, you know, God tells her to do things and she does it. And she always is obeying God. And yet she has desires in her heart that he's not giving to her. And so why should she love a God or serve a God that, you know, she'll do everything that he says, but yet he won't do anything that she wants as far as her desires and her desire. Well, I won't get into her desire, but, but it was a very, uh, <laughs> It was a very unhappy, unpeaceful um, call, and it was sad, right? It's like, and and here's where I'm talking about. You know, we've been going through Hebrews 9, 10, and 11, or 8, 9, and 10, and talking about, you know, how Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus came and made one sacrifice for sin forever to make you 100% right with God. And I'm here to tell you today that you, whatever you receive in your life, isn't because you earn it from God. Any good that comes into your life. Now, the bad that comes into your life, some of it we have earned. Some of it is just consequences of our bad decisions, of our bad behavior. I, I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying that God can't rectify that and turn it for your good. Um, but then we do live in a fallen world and we have an enemy that's out to steal, kill, and destroy. And so um, some, some things happen to us in life that are just bad, they're just bad. But here's my point, in this phone call, um, it was a level of, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into what the Lord revealed to me yesterday. So that was that phone call, I listened to it and I was like, oh my goodness, that's just hardcore. Uh, she's basically very upset uh, and extremely upset and couldn't listen to reason or didn't want to pray. She just wanted to find out why God wasn't doing this stuff for her. And so yesterday, now, now let's go to yesterday. And, um, there was a person at, um, <clears throat> this function that we had yesterday. And, um, this person wanted to ask some questions and he was saying how, he started, uh, he was like, can I just pick your brain? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, praise God. I have a moment. So let's, let's talk. And, um, you guys here, it was almost freaky. The almost exactly word for word, um, things he was saying that this phone call, this, uh, this lady was saying on the phone call that, um, now she's not allowed to call into the ministry because she went over the top. I mean, it was bad, uh, cursing and swearing at the, at the prayer minister and stuff like that. Uh, but this guy, he starts saying almost the exact same thing. He's saying that, you know, God, uh, he's believing God for things and God is just not coming through for him in a timely fashion, but yet he's, um, you know, lived right and he's done all these right things. And it's the same almost word for word these two people were saying the same thing and it freaked me out in that moment I was just like almost frozen I was like this is like the exact same deception the exact same attack of the enemy that they're that these two unrelated two completely different people it was so much word for word I almost thought for a second are they hearing this from someone like have they heard the same sermon um or have they heard the same speaker uh, it was eerie. And I say this because, and this is what I said to this individual yesterday. I said, he, and, and he ended it with, I just don't, I struggle with loving God. Um, because, uh, because he's not giving me these things, man, that is, that is a scary place to be. You guys, I just want to encourage you that if you, if you have that, and this is what I told him, I said, you, um, have trouble loving God because you don't know how much God loves you. And that's the, that's a lot of it. But then as I was uh, praying this morning, I was thinking, my goodness, this has everything to do with righteousness. This has everything to do with grace. This has everything to do with mercy. You know, honestly, you guys, we get wrapped up into these things, our carnal desires. Now, while they may be God given, um, maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's more money. Maybe it's a promotion at your work. Um, what is, it doesn't matter what it's motivated from. Well, it does, but 
here is my thing. You know, every single day you wake up and you have breath. You're able to wake up and you're able to live another day. And and you're able to live another day in the presence of God because God dwells on the inside of you if you've believed on Jesus. And if you've believed on Jesus, you are 100% right with God. And he's not giving you things because you've earned it or because you deserve it. It's all by grace. And, and this is where God wants us to be in a place of, Lord, I, I just believe you're going to give me this because you love me. Not because I've earned it or, or on the flip side, disqualifying myself from receiving something because I haven't lived right or I haven't done things right. It's the same thing. It's just opposite sides. And that's what I was talking about last week in, in my video is that, you know, you can come from it from either side, but either side is works righteousness, meaning I deserve to be right with God because I've lived right. And this is what I saw in these people, uh, two unrelated individuals, different, um, backgrounds probably I don't I don't know because I don't know them like that but I'm just saying they're two completely unrelated individuals saying the same thing and they're saying God how can I love God he doesn't love me because I've done everything he tells me to do that is disgusting and and that's that side and then it's just as disgusting to be like, well, I don't deserve anything good from God because I've lived so badly. Even though I believed on Jesus, and I believe Jesus is, is the Son of God and that He died on the cross for my sins, but His sacrifice wasn't enough for my sin. Do you see how disgusting it is on both sides? Like, uh, yeah, Jesus died on the cross for my sins, but yet my behavior should warrant God giving me something. I'm here to tell you, there's nothing that that is disgusting um, and self-righteousness is disgusting in the sight of God and it's hindering you from from receiving and that's these two people are saying oh I've done everything God told me to do really really have you no you have not there is no person that has done every single thing that God has asked you to do except Jesus so at the end of the day, you should be thanking God that you have breath today. You should be thanking God that he has a relationship with you, that he loves you, that he wants to be in your world. You should be thanking him. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags in our own strength, whether it's good or bad. It's disgusting and it's gross. Filthy rags is a very bad term. Uh, in in the context of the old covenant or of the old testament or of the bible times it was a disgusting term and that's what your righteousness is whether it's good whether it's bad and so i want to just look at an example of this in the bible now <laughs> i always like to keep a balance because hear my heart i am not trying to condemn you if that's where you're at but see we see this all the time especially in the area of healing now i don't think these two people were not i know the the one phone call that she was not believing for healing not at all and i don't think this guy was believing for healing either yesterday but it, it's the same thing that you see a lot in the area of healing is people going well i've prayed I've confessed my scriptures. I, you know, I fast. I, um, I take communion. I, you know, and the list, all these things that they have done, that they are doing. And they're like, but why have I not received my healing? See, it's like, I've done all these things to earn my healing. And guess what? God is not going to heal you because of what you've done. God is healing you because Jesus took all your sickness on the cross 2,000 years ago. You are healed. Healing is jam-packed. Enough healing to heal the entire universe is jam-packed on the inside of your spirit. And, and we're, meanwhile, trying to earn it out here. Likewise, righteousness. Anything you receive, anything good that you receive from God is not because you earned it or because you deserve it. It's because he loves you. 
and he already gave it to you 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross. And the minute you believe on Jesus, you tap into it. You tap into every provision that God has given you. Listen, um, you know, I'll just go ahead and say the the gal that was on the phone, and I feel like this guy yesterday um, was believing for the same thing. She wanted a husband and a family. And she was straight up angry at God because she hadn't gotten it yet. She's like, unbelievers can get this stuff and, and you know, they don't have to, they don't have to obey what God tells them to do. See, she's got a wrong view of God. And really at the end of the day, you guys, something so carnal, we get so wrapped up into our needs and our wants and our desires. And at the end of the day, man, we have the precious gift of righteousness. We have the precious gift of God himself, Jesus, the son, the Holy Spirit, all dwelling on the inside of us. If you never got a husband or a family, what does it matter? It doesn't matter. This world is such a small glimpse of all eternity that we have as believers. Well, as unbelievers as well, you have an eternity, um, But if you don't believe on Jesus, you are not spending it in the presence of God. You are spending it in eternal damnation. Uh, So everybody has an eternity. um, And it's so long. And as born again believers, we get wrapped up into this stuff. and, And it pained my heart to be like, God, they're so upset with you because they think that you're holding out on them. And that they have to earn what you want to freely give. Let me say this to you. God knows everything about you. He knows every thought, every desire, every intent of your heart. We don't know in ourselves. A lot of times we can see in people, we don't know intent in people, but God knows everything about you. And listen, there's some things he's not giving to you for your own good. Or maybe for the good of the other person or people that would be involved. You know, when I was in Bible school, I was like, God, just make me usable. That's still my prayer today. Like, Lord, make me usable. And don't, I'm never going to promote myself to step into a door, to push a door open that I'm not supposed to be there. You know why? Because I can hurt people. I can hurt myself and God knows where I'm at. So if God opens a door, He's saying, okay, you're ready. You're trusting on me. You're trusting in me to a level that I can trust you with this bigger sphere of influence. And to me, if your heart is right towards God, it can be scary. A lot of people come busting in like, I need a husband. I'm perfect for a husband. Well, I can tell by her actions and her behavior on the phone to such a point that um, she (laughs) isn't able to call in for a while. that tells me that there's some issues in here that if she were to get a husband or children, uh, yeah, she could potentially hurt them and herself very badly. See, there has to be a growth inside of us and God knows where we're at. And so that's what makes me, um, have that patience and have that, you know, I don't even think about some things anymore of, um, desires. God's placed desires in my heart for sure. And, and while I want them, I don't want them ahead of God's time because I want to be whole. I want to be a blessing for where God's taking me. I don't want to push doors open to where God's taking me. And then I, I don't have the character to stay there. I don't have, um, you know, I haven't dealt with some issues in me. Uh, God hasn't flushed them out yet. And so he, he's protecting me. He's protecting other people by not getting me there yet. Man, I pray that you're understanding this. Uh, keep an eye on my time. Okay, so let's look at this example in the Bible. This is what God uh, really ministered to me this morning. As I was thinking about these two people, seriously, it was like, it, it was um, somewhat disturbing listening to these two people almost verbatim saying the exact same thing. And so, um, but here's an example of the same thing in the word of God. So we're in Luke chapter 18, and this is the rich young ruler is, is the reference of this story. So let's just jump right into it. It's Luke chapter 18, verse 18. And it says, and a certain ruler asked him saying, asked him, 
the him is Jesus, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, I've heard lots and lots of, of uh, sermons on this scripture, and, uh, and so I'm just going to kind of blend them all together, but, but here's what I'm looking at. He said, first of all says, What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Now, granted, nobody could be born again yet. Their inward nature could not be changed yet at this moment in time that we're reading because Jesus had not yet died and been raised from the dead. That is how you are changed from the inside. That's, that's how God was able to change your innards. <laughs> that's how he was able to make you um, a new creation, a new creature. Um, was once Jesus died. So Jesus had not died yet, obviously. But see, this is where a lot of New Testament, New Covenant believers who have believed on Jesus, that's where they're at. What must I do? And see, that's where these two people were at. And maybe this is where you're at. And like I always say, absolutely no condemnation in this. I'm just trying to encourage and exhort you to another level is that you don't do anything to deserve what God's giving you. Verse 18, he says, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He called him good master, good master. See, now here is the deal. When we come to God, when we come to Jesus and when we go to God and we say, God, uh, you know, heavenly father, And he's like, why are you calling me a father? You're treating me like a taskmaster. And that's what Jesus is going to say. He says, why do you? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. See, God or Jesus knew this, this ruler's heart. (laughs) He was like good master. He was calling him a master and saying, what do I have to do in order to earn this? See, he wasn't seeing that Jesus was the son of God, that Jesus was grace and truth, that Jesus was the savior of the world. He didn't see that. He was saying, what do I, what must I do? Let's continue on. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. So Jesus lists some of the top 10, the big 10. Says, okay, you want something to do? Here's a list. But see, uh, yeah, so there's so much to this, but I want to stay on, on point, on topic of what I'm trying to prove in this, in this story. Um, and he said, the, the ruler said, all these, all these have I kept from my youth up. Okay, he's deceiving himself right here. Um, (laughs) This is what happens when we get into self-righteousness, you guys. And this is what I saw. I could just like picture it. Um, It's this self-righteous attitude that like the phone call that I listened to, she was like, I do everything God tells me to do. Really? No, no, you don't. Um, that is you're stepping into an area of self-righteousness and pride that is a stench in the nostrils of God because really we don't do everything God tells us to do we don't I I don't care how much of an uppity up how high you are in the kingdom of God how close your relationship is with God we're always going to miss it but here's my point Jesus covered all the misses Jesus covered all the misses and all the follow-throughs because it doesn't make a difference here nor there and that's where this guy was saying all these I have kept from my youth up oh wow isn't he amazing see but Jesus sees the issue at hand which is a a pride issue that that is so prideful for this guy to say oh yeah I've done all of that I've done all of that but see (laughs) Jesus uses the law to bring him to an end of himself because this is where Jesus says Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Ye lacketh thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And it says he went away sad in another 
in another uh, count encounter of this or another um, book of the Bible. <laughs> I'm trying to stay focused on my point here, but see God, but Jesus could see um, his his heart wasn't there. This guy was like, "What must I do?" to be saved and God and and Jesus is like oh you do this this is this and this and this and then he takes it to another level see the the law will always take you to another level if you're dealing with God uh, based on your actions there's always going to be something more that you must do until you finally give up and you should be going back to Jesus but see the the error that we can get into as a born again believer in this self-righteous attitude like these two people I was talking about they're like well I've done everything I'm supposed to do they're just like this rich young ruler oh I've done everything oh really man I and I've said that a number of times now oh really because it's like that is so you are so deceived if you think you've done everything to deserve any goodness from God you've done nothing to deserve goodness from God what you really deserve is hell and fire and damnation because you are you have been a sinner you have sinned against God but guess what when you believe on Jesus it's all wiped clean it is a clean slate and it is not just a clean slate it is a sparkling clean never to be defiled slate before God because of Jesus and Jesus alone there is no works that you can do to deserve um, anything from Jesus or from God you simply believe on Jesus and that's what gives you all the good things that God wants to give you and see who would you be if you truly believe that who would these two people be if they truly believe that then they would stop trying to do things for God in order to get from God oh. let me ask you this why are you doing the things that you do are you doing it in order to get something from God or are you doing it because you are so right with God and see this is where it comes back to righteousness and that's where my life was so changed. It was because for decades, I thought that I needed to not go to the bar um, and not do drugs and not sleep around so that I could be right with God. And all that did was just strengthen it. It just, it just made it harder. It was like, ah, oh, man, I don't really want to do this thing. And I really want to be right with God. But it just had this power over me. And it wasn't until I understood how right I was with God, even though I did those things because it was never my actions that made me right with God it was always Jesus that made me right with God and once I started understanding it and believing it then it was like I am so right with God why would I want to do that stuff do you see how this tweak in our brain can be a radical life changer for you and that's what I'm trying to encourage you in today we just need to have that tweak in our brain to go I am so right with you, God, that I know you are going to bring things to me in when I'm ready. <laughs> when I'm to a place to where these things that you're bringing to me will not be my identity. You're my identity in all things. My right standing with you is based on Jesus and Jesus alone. And so it doesn't matter what you bring me. My relationship with you is square. It's tight. And outside of you, I deserve nothing. And only because I'm in Christ Jesus do I deserve anything. And I don't really deserve it. The only reason I deserve it is because I believe on Jesus. Because Jesus paid the price for me to have good things. Jesus paid the price for you to have a victorious life. Not because you've earned it. Not because you're living right. Not because you're doing everything right. But because Jesus did it. And you're believing on Him. And that is what God is wanting you to tap into. That is God, what God... God wants you to be in this continual place of, okay, God, <clears throat> you know, take this gal on the phone, for example. Oh my goodness, the time. Take this gal on the phone, for example. You know, if she could switch into a place of going, God, I just want to do what you want me to do because I know your purposes and plans are good for me. I know that if, if you tell me to take a left, I know that that is a life-changing, altering uh, maybe saving my life left turn see you don't do it because okay I'll turn left 
be in hopes of God, you're going to give me what I want over here. No, God knows the heart, your heart's desire. God placed, if you're seeking God, he's placed those desires in your heart. He wants to give it to you more than you want it, but he doesn't want to give it to you. If you are going to hurt people, if you're going to hurt yourself, if you're not ready for it, God's not going to give it to you. So instead of having this attitude of, well, God, how come you're not giving me this stuff? No, instead you're going, God, I thank you. I thank you that you know my heart. I thank you that I'm doing whatever you want me to do to the best of my ability because you saved me and that you have a purpose and a plan and a destiny for me. And so whatever you have placed the desire in my heart, I know you're going to bring it when I'm ready. (laughs) And thank you, Lord, that you are protecting me in that way. Man, there's such a different place to be and it's so freeing because I no longer have to think, oh, what am I not doing? Um, Maybe I need to do this harder. Maybe I need to do less of this. And and then we can start to be so introspective that we can't see any of the goodness of God. Um, And so it's so freeing to go, Lord, I am here for you. You say left. I go left. You say right, I go right. Whatever you tell me to do, that's what I want to do. And in this process of our relationship, of our walking with God, you are getting me to a place that I am ready to receive all the goodness that you want to bring my way, not because I deserve it, but because I believe on Jesus and I'm 100% right with you, God. So I know that even if I don't take a left when you tell me to take a left, that you're still going to turn it around for my good. And so there, it's freeing. Man, you know, and when I was talking with this gentleman yesterday, I just, my heart sunk. My heart went out to him because it's, it's like, it's, that is such a hard place to be. And there is no life. There is no freedom. And, and the fact that he still serves God in his mind, serves God, um, is amazing to me. See, I, I would have just given up like, it, because you got to come to an end of yourself. And so, uh, I'm going to have to end it here. My time has run out. But I just pray that this message blessed you. It's blessed me. And, and I pray that you can understand what I'm saying is that, <clears throat> you know, I'm always trying to find a title for each of these programs. <laughs> and I don't know what this week's title is going to be. But my point to you is, is that, you know, it's not by your good doings. It's not by your obedience. It's not by your, um, well, obedience I don't want to get into that, but it's not by, you're not earning anything from God. Stop trying to earn stuff from God. Just believe on Jesus and say, you know what? Because Jesus, because of Jesus and because of my faith in Jesus, I am right with God and I get this. I get good from God. I get nothing but good stuff coming into my life when I'm ready and God is so wanting to protect me and he was wanting to fulfill me, fulfill those desires that he's placed in my heart and, um, and I don't have to earn it. I don't have to earn it. So, uh, that's the end. (laughs) So if this message blessed you, I would encourage you to uh, share it with someone um, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And those of you that are new subscribers, um, welcome to my channel. I'm super glad that you um, have subscribed. And also uh, some of you guys who watch me on different areas. Yeah, I had some braids in my hair. Um, Maybe I'll talk more about that next week. Uh, But yeah, I was gonna do a video with braids in my hair, but I took some time off and just rested and, um, and didn't get time to um, record a video with braids in my hair, but braids came out last week. And, uh, so here I am. Uh, so anyways, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments. You guys are a blessing. You can subscribe. Um, and if you hit like, you will get a notification each and every time I post a new video. Otherwise you can follow me on Facebook. I'm really not doing anything there. I may at some point, I'm just a little bit anyways. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Arrested and Free or give me a call, send me a text message at 970-919-0459. And you guys have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye.